You're watching ABC4 News. TikTok restrictions are moving forward in Congress lawmakers, banning the popular app from most government devices. Some, some leaders worry China could use that personal data collected on the app against the U.S. Hannah Brandt is in Washington with the details. Time is up for TikTok on government phones. This is a big step, and this will be the biggest action against big tech that Congress has ever taken. Congress is on the brink of passing legislation to ban the app on most federal government devices. Senator Josh Hawley led that charge. It's a huge security risk for Americans' privacy and also national security. Senate Intelligence Chairman Mark Warner agrees. He says TikTok is dangerous because it's owned by China and collects users' personal data that could be used against the U.S. And and he says, more importantly, a Communist Party of China could dial the algorithms and this become a, a misinformation channel, a man, manipulation channel. Senator Rick Scott says every American should consider ditching TikTok. Every parent should be questioning TikTok right now. And it's, it's toxic uh, to your children. Lawmakers say they aren't done with TikTok yet. They're waiting on the Biden administration to take action. My patience is worn thin. The Biden administration, they've had over a year where they were supposed to be figuring out a way to keep the data of Americans safe and to make sure that TikTok did not become a propaganda tool. Senator Hawley is also pushing the president's team to take action. They need to force the Chinese parent company to sell TikTok USA and keep Americans' data safe. And both senators say if the administration doesn't do something. I think there will be legislative action that will be taken next year. Some in Congress even suggest banning TikTok from the U.S. entirely. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. And the former CEO of cryptocurrency exchange FTX is being released on a $250 million bond. Sam Bankman Fried's parents are bailing him out and he will be on house arrest at their home in Palo Alto, California. Bankman Fried is accused of defrauding investors and transferring billions of dollars in FTX customer money to his hedge fund. Prosecutors say he then used that money to fund his lavish lifestyle and make risky personal investments and political donations. I did not know that there is any improper uh, use of customer funds. Two former colleagues of Bankman Freed, including his ex-girlfriend, have pleaded guilty to federal charges and are cooperating with prosecutors. The U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York is urging others to come forward. It's being called a holiday miracle, 35 miles from the Arctic Circle. It all started when a baby was having a medical issue, but couldn't fly out because the runway lights at the nearby airport were broken. That's when the community stepped in to make sure the rescue plane could touch down and pick up the child. If anything were to be done, you know, we were gonna have to all get together and do this. <clears throat> and that's what they did gathering 150 people in below freezing temperatures to light that runway with everything they could. You can see 30 ATVs, cars, and snowmobiles letting the plane land to pick up that baby. The child's mother says she is so grateful for these holiday heroes, saying she was blown away by what the community managed to do to save her baby. And millions of Americans are traveling as that winter storm rages on. National Weather Service calling it a once in a generation storm. Visibility near zero in parts of the country as drivers hit the roads for the holidays. Parts of the country could see the coldest temperatures in more than 30 years. Cheyenne, Wyoming watched its temperatures drop 32 degrees in just nine minutes to nearly 50 degrees below zero wind chill. It's not like a snow day, you know, when you're a kid. You know, this is serious stuff. It certainly is, and the storm is also taking a toll on air travel. Passengers are dealing with hundreds of flight delays and cancellations, hoping they can make it to their destinations on time and safely. Wind chill Saturday morning will be below zero from D.C. all the way to Boston and even Miami. We'll see temperatures in the 40s on Christmas Eve. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy. Weather rates certified 11 years in a row. And we are getting a break from the storms, but not those bitter cold temperatures. No, it is really bitter out there, Alana. Yes, been there, done that. When we talk about what's coming for the East Coast, well, we already dealt with that Arctic air, and we still are dealing with it tonight. Cold temperatures out there. It was a great ski day. That Arctic front came through and dropped off some snow. This is a look from Alta. Thank you to Chloe for sending this in, and you can see that fresh snow picked up more 
more than a foot. Deer Valley did well. Park City got nine inches, half a foot at Brighton and solitude, but that system has cleared. And what's left behind? Well, really frigid air. Our temperatures are going to start to rebound as we trek towards Christmas. We're going to talk about our air quality because we saw clean air today, but you still noticed haze in portions of the valley. We'll talk about when we can expect for elevated particulate matter to show back up. We're tracking a quick disturbance that comes through for our Friday. And what about some flurries? For Christmas Eve, well, it's possible. I'll tell you when, and we'll look at the white Christmas stats because it's that time of year. We've got to know. We look at all those numbers and crunch them and we'll give you the data. 21 right now in Salt Lake, 8 in Logan, 3 in Vernal, 27 in Price. It is a really cold one out there. We're below freezing with the exception of St. George. Wind chill still a factor with temperatures. The real feel in Logan, minus 6. It feels like 0 in Evanston, feels like below 0 in Vernal. And it feels like the lower teens in Salt Lake. If you step out, it's kind of a little bit of a bite. We don't get that often, but we get it with this Arctic air that's seeped in to northern Utah and has made a difference. Air quality for tomorrow, expecting that moderate range in Cache Valley, as well as on the eastern side of the state in Uinta and Duchesne County. Elevated particulate matter possible in Salt Lake because high pressure's setting up. We get a ridge setting up, but we are going to see increasing moisture underneath the ridge. And we saw that this evening in Perwin. Thank you to Doug for sending us that picture as the increasing and cloud cover was noticeable. Could see a few snow showers in and around that area. Just a few flurries, but with cold temperatures, that could complicate things. We're keeping an eye on that as we roll through our early Friday morning. As we look towards the West Desert, we're not expecting major impacts from this system as it grazes northern Utah into the early morning hours, but also central Utah and the eastern portion of the state. We get a bit of a split there. So towards Moab and Nephi around 7 a.m., there's a possibility of some showers. Clouds by 10 a.m., things quieting down. But we're bookending two disturbances for our Friday. We start in the very early morning hours with one and we end that way. Here we are just after midnight. This is Christmas Eve and we get another little disturbance that has the potential to drop a few flurries. Okay, it's pretty festive. Doesn't look like major impacts. Our mountains could actually get an inch or two and then we watch as that system kind of moves on. Other than that, cloud cover for our Christmas day and temperatures warming, jumping above average in some locations, including Salt Lake, if we can clear out that stubborn smog. Okay, these quick hitters, they help us. Snowpack numbers, really healthy. Love to see this as we're heading into the last week of the year. Starting to dwindle in eastern Utah, but healthy percents in northern Utah for our headwaters for northern Utah, as well as in the central portion of the state and even the southwest desert. This is what happened last year. We shut off right after the new year when it came to the storm pattern. We don't want that to happen, but we love seeing these healthy numbers. Let's hold on to them. We don't want to lose any snowpack. We want to keep building. It just helps us. All right, talking about snow. We know Cache Valley and the Uinta Basin have the best chance of seeing a white Christmas, statistically speaking. Not this year, though. We're going to be pretty dry. Here's a look at the last 10 years, and you're going to notice in 2016, we got 8.6 inches of snow on Christmas Day. The all-time record is 9 inches. And you can see we saw a five-year stretch there in Salt Lake where we did have snow on Christmas. Some flurries on Christmas Eve. We'll do this year. We'll take it. 20s and 30s for daytime highs tomorrow. We've got teens on the eastern side of the state, 36 in Delta, 54 in St. George. Speaking of Washington County, Christmas in view. Hello, we've got 50s and above that, bring in some 60s, a dry pattern until the middle of next week. And then a storm rolls in, bringing the chance of rain to southern Utah. OK, we like an active pattern to close out 2022. That system will also impact northern Utah, but with warmer temperatures, that could be a rain snow event. Speaking of snow, light snow showers tomorrow and then again, a slight chance. Check out Santa with his reindeer ready to go for the weekend. I hope you are too. Glenn, Emily, over to you.